you are listening to the B Cast. Yeah! <laughs> Good morning. What is up, my people? It's your boy, Vic Cedeno. We're back to VCast. It's a new week. All right, new week. And I'm doing the same old shit. I was supposed to record this yesterday. I actually started recording this yesterday. But I was really hungover yesterday morning. And... I just couldn't do it. I was like five, six minutes in, and I'm just like, ah, I can't do it. Oh, hangovers are fun. Hangovers are the best. My favorite. I don't know why alcohol makes you feel like shit. Is there what? What is the science? I I should have looked this up. What the fuck the science is behind hangovers and why they make you hangover and why do I always have to do this in the morning? Because at night I'm just usually too fucked up. To be quite honest, at least lately, and I should do them fucked up too, but I'm just lazy. Hell yeah, pumping this water in. Yeah, but I'm doing these every morning. I'm doing these first thing in the morning. This is like my diary, like my morning diary. I'm like, wake up, I don't even fucking brush my teeth or wash my face. I just set up this camera. With the camera's already set up, but I just set up this recording. Well, the recording equipment is also always set up. I just turn on my computer and I hit record. All right. I hit record and I just start saying my feelings. But I like the morning. It's quiet. Everybody's asleep. Um, and I can just be myself. That's one of the reasons why I haven't done Zoom comedy. Because in my house... Like, if I'm talking and, and I'm da 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 like what I'm doing right now, above us, probably, no, you probably won't be able to hear anything. It's not that bad. But if I get loud and, like, doing comedy and stuff, doing comedy, I can't talk at this voice. Like, I can't be funny and be like, hi, guys. Dry eyes. You know, like, I don't, I don't have... I mean, maybe I could. I don't know. I just didn't want to fucking do Zoom comedy all year. I just had no desire. I did one show in the beginning with with, with Clint Esposito, and we tried doing it like stand up. I didn't. We didn't do it. Well, I didn't do it sitting at the computer. I did my phone, and I set it up over there, and I tried to stand like a like stand up. <laughs> I tried to do stand up comedy on Zoom, and I didn't do it like this. You know. And I get, yeah, listen, man, I get it. People want to do things, blah, blah, blah. And they're fucking scared of the flu. And it's fucking crazy. And, or, you know, I get it. I get it. It's controversial. They're going to fucking take my podcast off of off of the internet now. We're just going to fucking censor me because I called COVID the flu. <laughs> the flu. For some people, it is. So for some people, it is the flu. So don't get mad when people say COVID is the flu. Because guess what? For some people, it is. And guess what? For some people, the flu isn't the flu. For some people, the flu is death. Okay? So don't get so bent out of shape when someone says COVID is the flu with better publicists. Like the fucking boys over at In Hot Water say the flu, the COVID is the flu with a better publicist. All right? Be offended about that if you want. Be offended. I'm sorry for people that lost someone to COVID. I know people that lost people to COVID. It's devastating. No matter what people die from, it's devastating. All right. I went to a wake yesterday for a friend of mine, which I'll talk about in a minute. Well, I'm going to talk about it right now. I went to a wake yesterday for a friend of mine from high school, lawyer friend. Um, we weren't good friends. We weren't best friends. We didn't stay in touch. Well, 
we stayed in touch via Facebook, but we didn't like talk all the time. And, you know, we uh, talked on Facebook and stuff, but this guy came out of nowhere and helped me when he didn't have to. And, um, you know, did a very solid favor for me and helped represent me during the, uh, the scam days, um, and get me out of, and he just helped me cover my ass to make sure that when the house came down, on the fraud when the house came down on the fraud i wasn't associated with me he kept me away from the fire okay so um i'll always be uh i'll always remember that i'll always be indebted to that but the whole point i was saying is that he died suddenly and you know when people die on um, uh, when people die and people talk about it online i believe i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that we all want to know why we're nosy we want to know why but it's rude to ask so i just scroll the comments when people pronounce that someone when somebody's talking about the death of someone else i scroll the comments looking for the person that doesn't have any cooth that's going to ask and say hey well, what happened why did they die like because that's what you want to talk about but people's curiosity gets the best of them and they ask straight up in the comments and then, then I hate when people respond and they say they're going to all DM you. I'll private message you. No, tell all of us. We all want to know. We all want to know what happened. I'm curious as to how this person died. So he died suddenly and we didn't know why. I assumed, I thought it was COVID and his family just didn't want to say anything uh, because he was a Republican. And um, uh, I don't know if it was, you know, maybe these are all things I'm making up in my head also. Um these are the stories I tell myself. So it's not real. I don't delude myself with the stories I tell myself. I know that the stories I tell myself are just stories. They're not facts. A lot of you people don't know that you're telling yourself a story. They, you don't know that the stuff that you tell yourself isn't real because only you make it up. You imagine it, right? You don't know what the real reason is. You just imagine. Anyway, he... um. He passed away suddenly, and I was thinking, oh, shit, COVID, you know? And no, it ended up just, he just drank himself to death. And um, what was the whole point of this? But people die. People die. And it sucks. And I've had friends that lost, I had a neighbor, kid I went to high school with, I grew up with. His father died of COVID. And his father was beloved in their family. He was beloved as a neighbor, very respected member of the community. I'm sure even way more respected than I even know about. All right. Like he was, uh, he was a good person and, and it's sad and it's very sad that people die, but people die. This is fucking life. We can't bubble wrap the whole fucking world and we're trying. All right, because I just fucking uh, was at a restaurant and I was in a fucking bubble. Okay, I was in a bubble outside, a heated bubble. Very fascinating experience. I didn't know that I would uh, enjoy it so much, but I went on a rant. I just, I listen. If you're gonna go out to eat with your friends, okay, if you're gonna meet your friends somewhere to eat and you show up there, and where you're gonna sit is a bubble, don't be the first one there. Okay, don't be the first person to show up for the bubble. Because you're going to be the bubble boy. There's going to be a period of time while you're sitting in that bubble by yourself. And you are the bubble boy. And people will walk by and they will laugh at you. And they will shame you for sitting in a fucking bubble. You're sitting in a bubble. You look like you're going to give. Or like you're scared of everybody. It's a very, very shameful place to be in. I didn't want to take any pictures. I told the lady, no pictures. If you take any fucking pictures, I will slam you online. All right? I'm a high level, high level Google local representative. Okay. So if I write about you, people take it very seriously because I write reviews, mostly positive, mostly positive. I rarely slam a place. And if I do, you had it coming. If I slam your place on Google local, you deserved it, okay? You deserved it from me because I give good rating. I do. 
I try to be understanding and I give good ratings to people. So when Google sees a bad rating from me, they go, this guy, he knows these people must be real pieces of shit. This establishment must be taken off Google. We must remove your local listing. So now that when people search, they don't, won't see your phone number. We do not want people to see a menu to your shitty establishment. So I was in a fucking bubble. And it's everything feels like a fucking television show. Everything's a television show. This does not make sense. I'm waiting while we're sitting in that bubble for somebody to come out with a camera and say, hey, look, Ashton Kutcher's behind that fucking wall over there. This is a whole episode of punk. We punked the planet. That's what we did. Ashton Kutcher punked the planet. He is a god. The god of pranks. This is a good one, Ashton. Hop out. Where are you, Ashton? I'm waiting for you to pop out and tell me that this is all a fucking joke. Because that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like you're putting people through. An episode of fucking punked. As they walk around, they have to get out of their car. Put a mask on, walk in, walk to their fucking table, sit down, take the mask off. Does the fucking air magically, when you're sitting, not go up? Does it not travel anymore? I just, it's better. I guess it's better than them fucking just barricading the doors. I mean, it could be worse, right? We could be California. Oh, my God. These, they don't make any sense. It doesn't feel safety driven it feels like you're just trying to do something to do something you know what i'm saying like this is we're doing like so when they say hey what why didn't you help us like hey look we tried to lock you guys in your house and it didn't work we tried to lock you guys in your house and it didn't work we tried to make you all wear masks and it didn't work and for the people that did wear a mask it didn't work anyway in these countries that they lock down hard, it didn't work. It didn't work. But they tried something, right? It, it made them look like they every day they can come out with their fucking folder. And they come out. And they stand at their podiums. And they fucking have these grandiose speeches every week. And everybody's turning to them for help. And... It's just gross. It is gross. It's why I hate politics. It's why I hate politicians. Because you become a grifter. I just learned this word now. Grifter. Like you're just trying to get get stuff for money. Or you're just doing things just to go. I mean, I, let's look up at the definition of grifter. So I can get this right. Because that's what I believe politicians are. Grifters. Let's go. Grifter. A grifter that I spelled wrong. Search for word grifter. A person who engages in petty or small scale swindling. (laughs) Politicians are the ultimate grifters. I saw him as a grifter who preys upon people. That is the sentence that they use as an example. I saw him as a grifter who preys on people. Politicians are grifters. They prey on you. They prey on your fear, your confusion, your stupidity. Your mob mentality. I'm convinced that they study, like, psychology. Like, there's a whole fucking rabbit hole of the NWO and who controls what and the deep state and all that stuff. But the people that are in control, I believe they studied life psychology. And, like, that's all rolled into the mix and manipulating people and, you know, programming them and all that good stuff. Like... People don't believe it. People see it as a conspiracy theory. Everything is a conspiracy theory until CNN says it. Then it's not a conspiracy anymore. It's fucking silly. There's so like, there's just so much silliness, and and that's that's I think part of the scam is that it is so silly. So that when you do tell people, like you can have a conversation with somebody and just tell them normal stuff. 
tell them things that are 100% true, documented events that have happened, things that are in place, laws. You can tell people about these things that exist and they think you're a conspiracy theorist because it's outside of the information that they're it's does it's not in line with the information stream that they're steadily receiving it so if anything comes that doesn't come from that same source that doesn't follow that same ideology that doesn't follow that straight line of thinking if it's not in that wave people fucking bug out they don't know how to act they can't process that new information it's a conspiracy theory it can't be real you know it's fucking crazy man these bubble boys I me in a bubble just drinking i got so drunk too i didn't realize it i got pretty drunk off of um stella's we had a, they had a little fucking 30 dollar tower of stella they just put the draft in there and they don't have to come back and bother you anymore drunk i got drunk and then i stormed the capital that's what i did i got drunk and then stormed the capital did you see that shit people fucking stormed the capital and people are losing it people are out of their minds on both sides it's just the extremists that's the only thing you see on on tv and the only thing people are talking about are the extremists on both sides they don't talk about the fucking because the extremists on both sides is a lot better for ratings than just how everybody in the everybody else in the world normally believes you know because there wasn't a million people there wasn't a million people at the capitol let's say right maybe a couple hundred thousand people i doubt it was that much but let's say a couple hundred thousand people do you know what the percentage of that is to everybody else in the country there's 350 million people and a fraction of the percentage is what is like that's what it's used to represent everyone right so they take the extreme of a trump supporter somebody that would wear a fucking a costume to fucking watch you know what kind of a fucking fanatic you have to be to wear a costume for anything to go to a football game dressed in a fucking in face paint and war paint you're a fanatic there's something going on You're, you're just out of your fucking mind with it and, that, and for some things, that's fine. For sports and shit, you go ahead. You want to fucking paint yourself and go to a fucking sub-zero football game with no shirt on? Fine. Be your guest. All right? Be your guest. But I'm not into it. I'm not into it. Same way I'm not. In, I kind of wanted to go to the Capitol. I was talking to the boys at the dojo, the dojo boys. We were talking about going down there to cover it just as a goof, make videos and stuff. But that's it. I, I I don't. I'm not for any cause. I I'm just not a fucking protester. I'm not a protester. I'm not an activist. Like if you do those things, that's fine. But I'm. That's just not me. I'll write my congressman. All right. I write my congressman. I write the fucking uh, senators. That's about the amount of activism you're gonna get from me. I'll sign petitions. I'll sign the fuck out of a petition. I will sign a motherfucking petition like a thug, like uh, like I'm fucking changing the world. That's how fucking g'd up I'll sign a fucking I'll crip walk while I sign petitions. All right, I crip walk while I sign petitions because I'm a motherfucking badass. I'm just crip walking on the Constitution, crip, crip walking on the see see walking on the Constitution. I'm Constitution walking, Constitution walking. You can't see the foot movement right now. There's a lot of foot movement going on. I just, they just want you. And then I had a friend of mine, you know, where you were you talking to group chat. I'll read you what I said to him because he sent this article about USA Today and they call it domestic terrorism. Right, the domestic terrorists, the terrorists, the globalist. It's it, you, it, uh, who's the conspiracy theorist? Who? Who is the conspiracy theorist? Me? No, 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 not me. Um, so he sends me this article. My friend sends me this article. He says at least twenty-five troops. Now they're gonna start investigating the fucking army and and uh, the secret service and everybody. Twenty-five troops under investigation for terrorism in connection with the Capitol riot. 
All right, so there was no terrorism all year long. Now there's terrorism. At least 25 troops are under investigation for terrorism related to Wednesday's siege at the Capitol. The siege. Did you see, there's a picture. They call this a siege. There's a picture of all of these fucking people walking into the Capitol, but they're in between the red velvet ropes. Like, we're going to storm the Capitol, but we're not going to cross the red, red velvet ropes. Fucking hilarious. 25 troops are under investigation for terrorism. Representative Jason Crow, a Democrat of Colorado and a former Army Ranger, said he spoke with Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy on Sunday and was told that at least 25 domestic terrorism cases have been opened as a result of the assault on the Capitol. The assault. The assault. Did you see those burning buildings? The assault on the Capitol. This is drama. This is big drama show big drama show because let me let me just read my response and then my friend said remember a couple months ago i said there would be a coup and you guys told me i'm stupid and america has too many guns well i'm not stupid and please stand by and then my response is i didn't say you're stupid and don't stay tuned for more programming i'm not gonna hop on another fear-mongering line that leads to another patriot act they'll make these people out to be the boogeymen there goes the terrorist keywords. You see all the keywords they're dropping in there. Watch the same phrases get repeated through all the usual outlets and repeated and repeated for weeks. People believe it. They get emotionally invested in that train of thought. And then it disappears from the news cycle. But we'll have this narrative. It's already in the head. The narrative is implanted. That's just the way it was. And then what's going to happen is... They're going to play that narrative as they shove another fucking Patriot Act down our throats and give themselves more power. That's I mean, that's that's the fucking playbook. All right. You don't have to believe same thing with 9-11. You don't have to believe that the government was behind it to understand they're taking advantage of it. OK. You don't have to believe that they committed the act in order to understand that they're taking advantage of it. So they're going to take advantage of these incidents, these, you know, terrorist acts, quotes, heavy quotes, terrorist acts. They're going to take advantage of these terrorist acts to just give themselves more power, to give themselves more power. That's it, it's always a fucking power grab. <sighs> Government is a necessary evil, but it is an evil. That's just the way I want people to approach. It. Like that's, I just, I don't care about your beliefs. I don't care. I think we do believe a lot in a lot of the same things. Like 99% of the time, we all want safety for a family. We all want our good neighborhoods to live in. We all want our, our, um, communities to do well communities to thrive we don't want people in poverty we don't want people that don't have access to health care we don't want people that um you know that women that can't get their fucking uh technology we can't we don't want a shitty society i don't think anybody wants that i don't think anybody wants other people to be down maybe they do some people do there's pieces of shit 1000 percent. but i think for the most part people in general want the same things we just want to go about it differently that's it we just think about going about it differently but if we can all come together recognize who the real enemy is and it's the government not because of any grand conspiracy that there's people that taken over no but because they're fucking people and you can't give people unlimited power you can't give them unchecked power you can't give people power that has no consequences there's no accountability you can't give people power without accountability and we have a whole system in place of a government that is zero accountable to the people it's not accountable. So when people want uh, free school, free health care, free university, you know, they want these programs. And like, I want this for people, too. Like, I want the people that can't pay for it and the people that don't have access to it to have access to it. I do. I think that's fucking fair. I think we live in a fucking time where everybody should be able to have the same access to the same opportunities. Right. We're in agreement. The problem is, is when you want to make the government 
in charge of that stuff. Now you give it to people that you, they're going to take as much money as they want. They're going to have inflated budgets. They're going to be spending $15,000 on calculators. They're going to spend fucking $15,000 on hammers because then their friends get the contracts and then they can scheme and they can manipulate. And then it's not about giving the fucking people what they need. It's about giving them and taking and seeing what they can skim off the top. All right, they want to see what they can skim off the top always. That's just people's nature. People's nature. I don't think people are inherently bad. I think people are inherently good, but I think people are inherently corrupted easily. I think I would be corrupted in fucking politics. You don't think you would be corrupted in politics? Do you think that you're so above board that if you're giving the power of Congress or if you're given the power that some of these people have, that you wouldn't abuse it? A little bit. You wouldn't abuse it a little bit. You wouldn't hook up your friends and make sure your family and the people that do, uh, you know, like if you're going to hire a fucking plumber for your fucking, for the state, you're not going to hire your friend the plumber. You're not going to give him no bid contracts. You're not going to hook them up. No, You know what I mean? Like, it's just the way it is. So when you give, when you have these programs and you force these programs on people and, and they don't work, they're ineffective and they're just they're just cat like they're just money laundering schemes at this point so that's why i feel like if people everywhere recognize this and you're just aware of it like i said government is a necessary evil we need cops we need firemen we need our roads fixed like it's a it's a necessary evil but we have to keep that shit in check other countries can have other countries can have uh free health care other countries can have free university you know why because when their politicians are corrupt, when their bankers are corrupt and the, the whole world, like their country pays for it as a result, like the financial crisis that we had back in 2008, did anybody go to jail? Did anybody get in trouble? No, they got bailed out. So what is the incentive for people to fear fucking people over if there is no incentive? Where right? the incentive is you get rich. It's just like... We just have to okay. So I think we should do these things. Private sector. I've been saying it for a long time. I feel like the health care system can be solved privately better than it could in the government sector. And I just feel like people can come together and do better for people than government can do for people. And I have an example now. Okay. I have an example now. It's called the Barstool Fund. All right. The Barstool Fund is an example of people doing better for people than the government. OK, now you can't do Barstool Funds for everything. I mean, maybe we can do a Barstool Fund for, you know, medical care. And I'm sure. But what I mean is I feel like I feel like if you give doctors the leeway, if you give doctors the ability to be more like doctors and be more caring and, you know, focus on their oath their hippocratic oath and all that stuff i feel like people would get help i feel like there would be people that get help that people would set up programs within their own communities to make sure that people have doctors to people that should have health care and i think we can do that and i think we could do that with more money from the government but in a different way i just think you can't really fucking you can't really let the government have anything. These are fucking savages. They're pieces of shit. You just can't have... They can't let them have everything. They should have burnt the capital down. You know? I'm in agreement with that. I didn't like either protest. The fucking protest all over the summer. The I mean, not the protest. The rioting. All right? There was a difference. The protest, I always support protest. I always, always, always support protest. I don't give a fuck what they're protesting about. Just the act of protesting. The act of that you have a voice. Good for you. I don't care what you believe in. But good for you for having a fucking voice. And for standing up and talking about it. And for affecting change in your own. Like, that. I that's I respect that 1,000% protest. I don't care. Even if you don't uh, agree with the method of protesting. Like, kneeling for the flag. Like, I don't fucking care. I don't care. It's not that serious. However, rioting, destroying property, looting, that's all serious. Those are all crimes. You're taking people's personal property, people that didn't do anything to you personally. So that was all fucked up. I didn't agree with that all year, and I didn't agree with the fucking Capitol storming the Capitol. However, I kind of do. I agree more with storming the Capitol than I do burning a fucking target. Why? Because the target didn't fucking do anything to you. Storming the Capitol, you're directly going after the people that have their fucking foots on your throat. 
if you're going to burn any fucking building, the capital seems a lot better than a fucking your neighborhood pharmacy. You know what I mean? Like destroying your own neighborhood and stuff. Fuck that. Take the fight to the politicians. Those are the motherfuckers that are really affecting change. You know? Bring the fight to the politicians. But like I said, I don't condone violence. I'm anti I'm anti aggression. Okay? Uh, that's my politics. Non aggression principle. Yes, I want free health care for people. I want people that don't have health care to have access to health care. I don't want you to use government force to force people to pay for it. Okay? Because you're putting a gun to people's heads and you're making them pay for it. And you're making them pay for it and you're making them get robbed. Alright? It's theft. Taxation is theft. They hold a gun to your head and they say, pay me or you'll die. Now, it doesn't look like that because they don't hold the gun to your head, Victor. There's no cops telling you you have to pay taxes or you'll die. What happens if you don't pay taxes? Then they summon you. And if you don't show up, if you don't respond to them, if you just ignore them, then they send people to come arrest you. Those people carry guns. If you resist arrest, they will fuck you up. Okay, you can get shot. You can get killed. You're getting put in the line of force. All right. You're put in a position where the consequences of you not participating, of you not doing your part, you go to jail. And to put you in jail, they need to send people with guns because you're not going to go to jail if somebody just tells you to go to jail. All right. If people were just like, hey, man, you fucked up. Let's go to jail. Come on. Fuck you. I'm not going to jail. Oh, uh, Listen, you got to go to jail. We're going to bring you to jail. I'm not letting you bring me to jail. All right. It's me and you and your friend here. I think I have a good chance against the two of you. But if both of you have guns, I'm not thinking about that anymore. Some people still are. Then they get shot for resisting. So it's not force. It's not lethal threat. You're not paying taxes under the threat of force. Yes, you are. So. I don't believe in aggression. I don't believe that you have to force people to do things. You shouldn't force people. Sometimes you have to do force people to do things, you know, whatever. But I believe for the most part, we shouldn't force people to do things. I don't think that's what a free country is. If it's a good idea, you shouldn't have to force people to fucking do it. <sighs> so that's my rant on fucking politics and the capital fucking the capital storming the capital they're storming the capital these terrorists fucking nonsense and they're just gonna play they're gonna play that narrative over and over again i'm telling you this is mind manipulation television is programming you watch that shit over and over again and it's it, it, it's what it does man it's that's what it does man it programs you dude oh I don't have to worry about this stuff because I'm not an activist, guys. Q is over. Also, can we can we talk about that for a minute? Q is over. For any of you that follow the Q conspiracies, Q is officially over. I don't want to hear no more about it. All right, you guys suckered me in. I wanted to believe. I wanted to believe because it sound it sounded like such a cool, um, like Tom Clancy. Uh, spy novel you know what I mean like it looked yeah it looked like a fucking spy novel like like it was written for TV like an episode of 24 or a season of 24 on the next season of 24 Jack Power tries to stop pedophiles he's gonna shut down a pedophile ring Jack Power versus the pedophiles Jack Power don't stick your dick in kids it was a fucking, it was a very interesting story that I wanted to believe. I wanted to believe Barack Obama, Hillary, and Mike Obama were going to go to jail. I wanted to believe that. I really, really did because I really, really believe they deserve to. I want to see politicians go to jail. I want to see politicians go to jail. I want to see one politician, high-ranking a high, like I want to see them in handcuffs, perp walk. I want it all to be exposed so that other politicians see we can't fuck around. That's what they need to understand. 
We can't fuck around. That's what they, that's the fear they had in their faces as a fucking six foot eight dude with fucking Viking horns was running through the Capitol with a fucking Trump flag around him like a superhero. He was running through the halls of Congress and they were afraid as they should be. That didn't affect any real change. But you know what would affect real change is if we drag Nancy Pelosi out of Congress with Chuck Schumer and uh, who's the fucking turtle dude, Mitch McConnell, and we drag them out of Congress in handcuffs and tell the rest of them that are under them, this will be you if you fuck around. If you steal from the American people, if you lie to the American people, if you manipulate the American people for your or your friend's gains, you deserve to go to jail. If you start wars in other countries, you should go to jail. If you drop bombs on other countries, you should go to jail. Jail. Jail should go to jail. It's disgusting. Absolutely fucking gross. So Q's over. Q is bullshit. Now we're here. What's on the next episode? What is the ne- what are we gonna do after this? Alright, Joe Biden. People still people still think on the twentieth Joe Biden's not gonna get inaugurated. We shall see. Stay tuned. Um, they have me hook, line, and sinker. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna beat around the bush and say I didn't believe. I mean, I didn't believe like they believed, but I believed. I believed. I wanted to believe. Let's let's rewind that. Rewind. I didn't believe like they wanted to believe. I just wanted to believe. I didn't believe like they believed. I wanted to believe that it was going to happen, but I had my doubts. I knew, I, I, in my mind, I'm like, this is not going to happen. I want it to happen. I want it to happen, but it didn't happen. So what's next? What's going to happen when Joe Biden is the president? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like my life's not going to change that much. That's a lie. My life is changing drastically as we speak. Um, I just, I don't know. Um, people are going to go to jail. More people are going to go to jail. Um, we're going to start another war. We're going to get into another war for sure. Um, and they're going to try to go on. It's going to be weird because they have the Senate too. They have the house they have, but they don't have the, they're going to load maybe some more Supreme court justices. It's going to be crazy, man. But you know what? They have the house, they have the presidency, do something with it. Let's see. Let's see. You've been talking all this shit for the last four years that things were going to be so much better or it would be better if, you know, we had everything. Now you do. Do something. Let's see what they do. I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them. I was right. Team. Team Biden all day, baby. Team Biden all day. Even though I kind of, um, I kind of started feeling for Trump. I've started feeling for Trump a little bit, a little bit. Um, all right. I'm starting. I this is a, a kind of joke I'm developing, but um, uh, kind of a bit. But I don't know how long it's gonna last. I, I said it last night, but um, hey, we'll break it. We'll break news here on this podcast. I'm gonna wrap this up in a minute, but I want to talk about this last thing. Um, things are gonna get weird for me this year. All right. Uh, you know, I don't talk a lot about my personal stuff on here um, just because I talk about my personal stuff. But like any of my personal stuff that involves other people like my wife or anyone else, I don't really divulge that information because it's not it's not just for me to divulge. I have to I want to respect other people's privacy. Not everybody wants to be online. Not everybody wants their business all over the fucking street. And, um, you know, you know I've, I've talked about this before, just being respectful. But new day new new day is coming um i am getting separated my wife and i are getting separated um it's been a long time coming well not a long time yeah i mean it's weird 
um, without going into all the personal details and blah, 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 I know because when people die, people want to know why. Well, people, you know, what well, happened? Why? Well, you know, did you guys? You know the gossiping. So, without going into too many details, my wife and I have just decided that we're gonna take a break, uh, just to figure some stuff out. Uh, you know, we're kind of on different paths. We, you know, have grown apart significantly, and we've just been in different places. So we, you know, this has been ongoing, and we just feel like taking a break is the right move. You know, that's it. That's all it is. And then we'll figure things out from there. But I have been on the fucking the apartment hunt, and the apartment hunt is, um, it's a pain in the ass. It's it's very upsetting. I'm very upset that I have to leave this fucking house. I love this house. I love um, my setup, obviously. Um, I love the people in the house. Um, but I'm going to have to, you know, move somewhere else. And I obviously, on my own, can't afford to keep up the same lifestyle that I'm used to. But I can do, I'm doing enough where I can have a fucking decent life. What was the whole point of this? Oh, it's just that's I mean, that's it. That's the stuff I'm going through. I know I don't talk about personal stuff and, you know, whatever, but uh, I finally told my mom, so that made it real. I didn't want to tell my mom because I've been in denial about this whole thing for a while, and I've been in denial about that, plus I also am a, a procrastinator, so I'm also delaying it. I don't want to fucking do it, And um, but we're here now. We're here now. Um, we're in a good place. Uh, you know, we're not volatile, things aren't bad, we don't hate each other, we don't fight, we're not arguing, it's nothing crazy, it's just, we're not getting along like we should, I I don't even know how to say, that even sounds stupid, because we're getting along fine, we're just, we just gotta figure shit out, that's it, and, um, these next steps, they're gonna be hard, and I've just been thinking about how to approach it, um, from a social standpoint, I, I let the boys at the dojo know I need to take a little bit of a step back. Um, you know, at least just for this month, <sighs> on on all the meetings and stuff and doing sketches, just because I can't. Um, I don't want to focus on. I'm, I can't focus on that. I need to focus on, you know, getting my, getting a new place, settling in, um, and and then fixing fixing shit. You know, um, it sucks. It sucks. It really sucks for for the kid. I'm fucking devastated to have to tell her this one day. Um, but I'm not. This isn't. I'm not the first person to go through this. I was very ashamed. I was very, um, very ashamed. Very. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, like that's ashamed. Ashamed and. Um, I just felt down about it. Like, I was ashamed and I was embarrassed. That's what I also I'm embarrassed. Like, I feel like a failure. I feel like, like a, like just a loser. Like you couldn't, you know, like you couldn't make your fucking marriage work. You fucking loser. And um, I feel, I feel like a failure. I feel like I'm letting, you know, my daughter down. I try to take responsibility because listen, two people make a relationship and two people fuck a relationship up. It's not just one person. Sometimes it is just one person, but it takes two to tango. You know, we both understand our roles in it. We both have resentment towards the other, like healthy resentment towards the other for the position that we're in. Um, But we're also very understanding of each other. We're empathetic of each other's feelings and what we're come where we're coming from. So, you know, the transition is not not that difficult, but. You know, it just sucks, man. I, you don't want to tell people about it. But like I said, I'm not the first person to go through it. Um, it's not a failure. It's it's just another part of life. It's just another stage. It's just another thing you go through and you grow from. Uh, the important, the most important thing is both of our mental health and both and the kid. That's it. The kid and our mental health and doing what we can to make us happy. We're both young. There's no reason why we should um, be miserable. There's no reason for us to be miserable. 
And if being together in a relationship makes us miserable, then there's no there's no reason why we have to stay like that. And we can do different things uh, to figure it out. <sighs> so, I mean, that's that. Uh, I'm looking for an apartment in North Jersey, uh, one bedroom, in case anybody knows. I'd really like to find something in somebody's basement. Like, you know, like in somebody's basement. That sounds so weird. But, like, you know how people have those apartments in their houses? Like, I'd like to find an apartment in someone's house that I kind of know. Because it's more comfortable, I feel like. But you never know. It could go the other way. You can find a fucking... Uh, camera's down. The camera's down. I fucked it up. Knock this fucking camera down. God damn it. Staring at the wall and shit. All right. I think that's fucking good enough. Good enough. Um. Yeah, so one bedroom... I mean, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Um, keep rocking, people. I mean, it's, this is another bump in the road. But we just got to keep fucking moving forward, man. You can't, you can't. You can't take the punches that life gives you and... You have to take the punches that life gives you. Is what I wanted to say. You have to take the punches that life gives you, um, and roll with them. You can't let them f fucking keep you down. Cause they're gonna come, man. These hits are gonna come. You're gonna get fucked up in life, and when things like this happen, you just have to be able to adapt. You gotta be able to adapt and. Stay positive. Look for the opportunities. There's always opportunities. And in, in, there's always opportunities in disaster. Just ask a politician. There's always opportunities. But if you're upset, if you're in your feelings, if you're resentful, if you're angry, if you're getting fucked up all the time, right? I think if you're getting fucked up all the time and escaping your feelings, which is what I like to do. Oh, this wire's caught. That's why. Oh my god, this thing's all over the place. Oh, look, the rest of the room. You want to see the rest of the room? Spinning it around. All right. F sorry, I'm fucking with this camera. How did this not? Holy shit! I just did a fucking 360 with the camera. All right. Right there, you can see my little fucking assholes live forever keychain. Right there, hanging. Um, you have to roll with the punches. You got to stay positive. You got to look for the opportunities. When when you're going through pain, when bad things happen, you lose your job, uh, you know, you, you fucking get a DUI, you know, whatever. Whatever the case is, whatever you're going through, you storm the Capitol, you get arrested, whatever you're going through, you have to keep a positive mindset. You have to understand that this is temporary. Like, the feelings that I'm going through are temporary. And they feel like this right now, but they're not going to feel like this always. I'm, I'm going to be happy again. I'm going to smile again today. And I, you have to force it sometimes. But um, you have to look for the opportunities in your pain. You have to look for the opportunities in your pain. Because through pain, through change, comes growth and opportunity. And right now, I have an opportunity to readjust um, refocus um, and you know put more time to myself put more time into comedy and and see what happens you know what I mean so that's the minor opportunity we'll see what happens man we shall see what happens but um, I'm going I've been drinking water I'm getting ready to go donate some plasma They pay you for that. Um, so 
Got to get the funds ready for the move, baby. Stacking chips. Stacking chips to dip and dip. Um, that's another thing. Save your money. I'm, I'm, I may be, um, I may be doing like a, a financial podcast. I think I might be doing that once a week. Talk over the finances. And oh, that's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that once a week. So it can help me. Whenever I do my bills, I think I'm going to do a little podcast behind it. And we'll talk money, and we'll talk bills, and we'll talk debt, and credit card debt, and escaping debt, and things like that. Because I got to do it. I'm not coming to you as an expert in, in um, you know, uh, getting debt, removing debt, debt removal. I'm not a fucking financial expert. I'm going to be learning these things while talking to you. So we can do it together. Um, so we got that going. Some financial stuff. And uh, comedy's kind of slow. Uh, and I just want to keep podcasting. I just got to keep podcasting. I just got to keep turning this mic on and keep kicking it with you guys. Um, so I got to get ready to post this episode for you. It's Sunday, 6.30. You know, it's Monday, 6.30, 8 a.m. I got the day off. going to go donate some plasma and um, find a place to live. So I'm... I don't know. That's it. I'm just, I'm, I'm like waiting for something cool to say and it's not coming. So we're just going to end it like that. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Always thank you for your support. If you're going through it, just remember that it's temporary and um, we can go through it together. All right. DM me, hit me up, tell me your problems. I'll tell you mine and we'll laugh about it. But until the next episode, folks, I wish you the best. Your cousin, Victor. Sends love. Goodbye. You're listening to my day of the VCAD.